Hayes. And now, would you please welcome to the ring, I see Isaac Chase. fight really between two novice pros it may be between two novices adam but this has captured the public's imagination it really has wonderful to see in a massive moment for the likable smiling unassuming but very competitive and seemingly mentally and physically strong isaac chamberlain who has literally spent every day of his three-year pro career quietly badgering all of us in boxing to give him opportunities, to give him a chance. He's crafted his way through nine good victories, overcoming obstacles already. But perhaps more importantly, as Anthony Joshua looks on, he has the experience of going on the road, sparring with the likes of Mike Perez, of Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua himself, and recently, and perhaps most importantly, Alexander Usyk. Could that be a real difference as he approaches the biggest night of his life? It could be, Adam. It really could be. But, and I will say a big but, that is sparring, make no mistake, with 16-ounce gloves on and head guards. Tonight, he gets in with by far the biggest test of his career and by far the most dangerous test of his career. Can he keep, for me, the big question, can he keep his wits about him? Can he stay calm under the pressure tonight? If he can, he wins. But if he shows any sign of weakness, if he loses focus or any concentration in this fight, he will find himself on the floor. And that's just a simple fact. When Lauren Ciccoli lands and lands Bush, guys go down at him. And this is the first time Isaac Chamberlain has faced this in his career. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring, Sauce Lawrence O'Coli! It's a piece former Olympian Lawrence Akoli, the source, the penny boy, the powerful puncher with the big team and the big dreams. Six knockouts in only seven wins and just 15 rounds as a pro. This is the real step up into the serious business of compelling crunch cruiserweight test. The size, height, reach and massive right hands, potent weapons, but is he hardened enough to deal with 10 rounds against a fellow unbeaten and more experienced pro? Is he ready? He looks very calm, he looks very cool and relaxed, Adam. The dance moves coming out are very nice to watch. And like I say, he's not wasting any energy by being nervous. Isaac looks very nervous, but very, very focused. I see both guys, and it's very, very different what I'm seeing from both guys, but the bell will go soon and the questions will be asked and they will have to be answered reminiscent of you when you were in here almost <laughs> a year or so ago yeah just just a little bit more on the line adam and just a little bit more of a dangerous guy in the corner more proven but still the same thing that needs to be proven tonight can he take it he's a massive cruiserweight lawrence Sacconi, six foot five Tucks that huge frame into 14-4. Isaac Chamberlain only 14-1-8 at the scale. So uh, big size advantage to Akoli. The experience with Chamberlain, the power you see, big statistic there. 
for a Coley at the bottom end. And uh, as so many have said, it's a pick -em. The is. bookies slightly lean towards Lawrence Coley. More people I've talked to around the business, good judges, are picking Chamberlain. Adam, I've changed my mind three times this week. I'm, I've finally come round after studying them both for the last 48 hours non-stop. I'm going with Chamberlain, but I don't say it with any great confidence because I understand that he's there to be hit. And your arch rival David Hay told me a few minutes ago it's a Coley and it's a Coley big. And he, he says a Coley purely because he's seen a Coley up close in the gym with his charge, Joe Joyce. But like I've said again, these are all sparring stories, Adam. Sparring stories and sparring happens with 16 to 18 ounce gloves on and head guards. Tonight we have 10 ounce, no head guards. It's electric, the tension. Here's John McDonald. And gentlemen, for the thousands joining us live here at the O2 Arena and the millions joining us around the world, somebody's O has to go. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Hearn's match from sport in association with AJ Boxing. Proudly presents 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental Cruiserweight Championship. Sponsored by William Hill, StubHub and JD Sports. And we are live on Sky Sports as we bring you the very best ringside seat in the business. All the officials have been appointed by the WBA in association with the British Boxing Board of Control. Our supervisor, Robert Smith, steward in charge, and area representatives are Dead Reese, Dean Hollington, Richard Barber, and ladies and gentlemen, joining Mick Collier, looking after our inspectors in a red and blue corner, is Barry Freeman and Ben Hansel. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the timekeeper at the bell is Brett Balls of Braintree and our three scoring judges from around the world scoring on the 10-point must system. Howard Foster of Doncaster, England. Grigors Melenda of Poland and Manuel Oliver Palomano of Spain. When the bell rings and the action begins, the man in the middle, the man in charge from Fleetwood, England is Mr. Steve Gray. Introducing to you, firstly, fighting out of the blue corner, Wendy Black Trunks, trimmed with the gold. He weighed in at 14 stone, three pounds and five ounces, with a seven-fight record, seven wins, six inside the scheduled distance, with a perfect professional record, having been a Rio Olympian and a member of Elite Team GB. Ladies and gentlemen, from Hackney East London, Sauce Lawrence oh, Holy. And across the ring, fading out of the red corner, around the white trunks, trimmed with grey. Weighed in at 14 stone, one pound, eight ounce. Perfect undefeated record. Nine contests, nine wins, four inside the scheduled distance. Ladies and gentlemen, the former undefeated Southern Area champion from Brixton, South London, I see Isaac Chamberlain. And now, ladies and gentlemen, two undefeated fighters collide in 10 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA Continental Cruiserweight Championship. OK, boys, I'm a cold break. You take one step back. Don't throw any punches to the back of the head. But take yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck, boys. A London derby which quite simply has it all. Two youngsters who few outside the trade had on any radar have surprised everyone with this fascinating promotion and build-up. It's captured the imagination. Huge amounts of tickets sold. Pride at stake. Undefeated records on the line. 
Lawrence Acoli and Isaac Chamberlain tackle a big battle 50-50 on paper. It could go any which way. Most feel Acoli, if he's to win, will be knockout within three, four rounds maybe. But if it goes long, will Chamberlain have the ring craft and the know-how to take Acoli into deep water? Compelling. Got, got to be very wary of that right hand early doors, has Chamberlain. He wants to get close to Lauren Tocoli and negate the power. When you are up close, the power is much smaller than when you are at range. At this kind of range, Adam, Lauren Tocoli is vicious. The massive man from Hackney, but the massively dedicated Brixton boy. Who can get it right? Right hand from Tocoli. Ah. Down goes Chamberlain in the opening minute. And that's the breakthrough that Acoli needed. And there is the power that they've all been talking about. He knows. He knows, Adam. He knows he made a mistake. He pulled out. He pulled straight back. It's a mistake that has put him on the floor here. This is what he needs to do. Make this messy. Tie Lawrence Acoli up. Hardly any sweat on the Chamberlain body. Was he properly warmed up in the... Backstage area, he looked nervous and cold before the first bell. And this has woken him right up, the right hands of Akoli. Lawrence Akoli can't afford to load up or waste much here, Adam. You see, what can happen now is you get over anxious from the knockdown. Good counter left hook there from Isaac Chamberlain. He's got to be careful, Lawrence Akoli, because the one thing that can happen with such a big puncher is you tire and gas. And that can happen by loading up, looking for the big shot. And you can be vulnerable yourself. Without a shadow of a doubt. He landed that shot, Adam, and there wasn't really much in it, to be totally honest. It was more of a reaction right hand. Isaac is making himself too easy to hit here, and he's putting the hands up instead of slipping. Big Push shot. Body shot. Yeah, good left hand from Akoli, who's had such a fast, furious start here. There's the big range and reach. He just shoves Chamberlain down. No knockdown, but that's the difference in size. It's the physicality, Adam. It's the physicality of Lorenz Akoli. We have to remember, Lorenz Akoli is a big, big cruiserweight. Very, very physical and strong. And it showed there in the clinch. It's Isaac. almost like a small heavyweight in with a medium-sized cruiser. Yeah, well, to be honest, Isaac Chamberlain isn't a big cruiserweight, but he's very skillful at times and he moves well. He's he's making himself too easy to hit. He has said in the build-up he cannot afford to shoulder roll in range. He's got to bring himself out of range and make himself harder to hit. It's a mistake that got him put down. He has to eradicate them from his game, Adam. It's the jab of Akoli, the spidery arms and the big start for the man from Hackney. corner, I wonder what Ted Bammy's thinking about this. Just a glancing shot, though. I said, Adam, he didn't even need to load up. It was there. He's seen the shot, he took it. You know, he, he didn't load up at all. It's, the th it's things like this, slight reaction. It's the back of the head, even, Adam. It's not even land a flush on the chin. What it does is it discombobulates you. It, it takes away your senses when it's around the back of the head. Experience corner, James Cook, terrific fighter. Once upon a time, so too Isaac's uncle Ted Bammy, Very former European trainer. champion. Very good coach, James Cook. The black and gold of Lawrence Acoli, the all-white. Lawrence Acoli just looks so much more relaxed, Adam. He's more relaxed. He's, you know, he's he's happy in there. Good counter left hook from Chamberlain. He's got to. He needs to to move more, Adam. For the first four rounds, Isaac Chamberlain shouldn't even be considering exchanging. He needs to take Lawrence Acoli to a place where he hasn't been before as a professional. He's been here, Adam. He's been in these exchanges early doors in the second round. Isaac Chamberlain has got to do something that no other opponents have done to Lawrence Acoli, and that's to try and make it physical, take it to close quarters, and get past five or six rounds. Attempt to negate those serious advantages that Akoli has. But Akoli was telling us in the week that he's 
happy to outbox Chamberlain at times and then knock him out. He said that it's all about the talk about Chamberlain's skill. He said, I've got plenty as well. I was the one that went to the Olympics. To be honest, Adam, he possesses the natural advantages in this fight. He has the height, he has the size, he has the physicality and the strength, and he has the power advantage. That's huge at this weight. For me, Chamberlain's better work is up close, it's inside. I think Chamberlain might be slightly quicker. It just, you know, he's getting caught going in. It's clever from Warren Zaccoli, because he's making Chamberlain pay every single time they're out of the clinch. And he's leaning on him as well. That weight will show Adam. You see where he's leaning here? The, the, that shows after five or six rounds. Isaac Chamberlain is not used to being in a wrestling match with such a big physical guy, especially on fight night. He might be used to that in the gym and sparring, but he isn't used to this on fight night. That was low from Lawrence Coley. Joe Joyce, who's ringside with David Hay, was saying that Lawrence Coley is so difficult to read. One point off for holding already from Steve Gray. Was, Is there, that any harsh? was there any wow. warning before that? I think that was. I think that's a little bit harsh from Steve Gray. There was no warning. There was no, you know, straight away a point. That's a bit much, in my opinion. But we'll see. He he's he's doing what he needs to do here, Isaac Chamberlain. He's making it messy. He's getting up close. He's not giving Lawrence Coley much target to find, and he's making him miss Adam. Let's just remember that now. We have 30 seconds left in round two, and Lawrence Ciccoli is being made to miss. Yeah, that could come into play later on, but it's been a bit of a nightmare start, this, for Isaac Chamberlain. Found himself on the floor in the first. Not a big punch landed, but he was down and counted, and now he's had a point taken off as well. Ciccoli just trying to drill these shots home. But how will he cope? round after round because he's so inexperienced as a pro he's cut he's got a slight nick over his left eye as isaac chamberlain it's not a, it's just a, a graze a little nick but there's a little bit of blood coming from it Tactical game plan, Team Chamberlain. But it's Lawrence Acoli who's had the much brighter start here to this cruiserweight clash at the O2, the vacant WBA Continental belt on the line. But it's much more than that. This is a gateway to the big time to really trying to dominate this cruiserweight division. It's so exciting at the moment. Forget about the big time, Adam. This is for territory, this is a derby, this is up close and personal. This is for who's the, who's the king of London, that's what this is all about. Time out again, Steve Gray wants it tidied up. So much has been spoken, huge tension. Regardless of what's been said, there is mutual respect between these two guys, I can absolutely guarantee that. They both know the quality guys in the beginning of both of their careers. I think both these guys are going to learn massively from tonight and will both go on to, to win numerous titles. This is when Isaac Chamberlain had that uh, disaster against Wadi Camacho when his shoulder popped out and he's dislocated a... and, and he got through that. Yeah, he did. Somehow, that was incredible. He's getting a bit more confident now, Adam. He's looking to sting Lauren Ciccoli with them heavy jabs. He's going in behind the heavy front foot and looking to land stingful jabs. So he's obviously confident back in his ability. He's got his legs back about him, but he's lost four points in two rounds, Adam. You know, I've got it scored 2016 because he's suffered two 10-8 rounds. One because of the holding, the other one because of the knockdown. Yep, you can't argue with that at all. Chamberlain trying to let his hands go. He's got those thick legs. 
which normally suggests a decent chin. He's not a big puncher, though, Chamberlain, although they've been working on that area, and he has had a few stoppage wins of late, but in this class now with Akoli, can he find something to trouble the big man? What he lacks in punch power, Adam, he makes up for it in bravery. As we saw that night against Wadi Camacho, the shoulder popping out would have been a very valid reason for any fights to stop. Good left hook the body there from Isaac Chamberlain. It would have been a valid reason to stop, but that night he bit down on the gum shield and he found a way. Flicking in the jab, there's the left hook as well. Getting closer, Chamberlain, but Coley tries again to shove him back. I think he felt that, Adam. I think, I think Isaac Chamberlain felt that left hook from McCauley. It was a short, cuffing shot that came out of the vision of, Lord, of Isaac Chamberlain. It's what I talked about in the build-up. Lawrence Coley throws shots that are very awkward and come out of the line of, of, of eyesight, and he's just seemed to have clipped Isaac Chamberlain with a left hook there. Not these big clubbing punches. That's a right hand to the top of the head as well by Akoli. There's a confidence in his work. Chamberlain tries to get back with a, a left hand. He needs something to work. He's being shoved around. He's physically suffering too. Welcome back, the talking over, the fighting very much underway, and it is advantage, Lawrence Acoli. He just looks a l little bit lost in there, Isaac Chamberlain. He does, I said at the start, is he looks very nervous tonight, but he's got through three rounds, Adam. He knows a couple more, and then this fight starts to edge more towards him. He is definitely getting more confidence, he's throwing punches now, so, you know... We're but, through three rounds and... But he's five points behind on your unofficial car. Remember, the knockdown and the point off as well. He is five points down on them, but I don't think in James Cook's game plan or Ted Bami's game plan they ever saw this fight go in the distance. And I believe they're looking at coming into this fight in the second half of this fight. They're going to want to draw this thing out to Lawrence Ciccoli. They're going to want to take him to a place he hasn't been before. And that's past six rounds. We know Isaac Chamberlain can do it. He's been there, he's proven it. Can Lawrence Ciccoli? This is the big question. Yep, at the moment he's answering questions, Akoli. He's uh, dominating this fight, but it is early still. Good body shot from Lawrence Akoli on the inside there. Isaac Chamberlain dipped low and he didn't see it coming under. He's got to be careful as he's coming out of these clinches here, Isaac Chamberlain, because Lawrence Akoli's power is devastating at mid-range. He has to be close as he's coming out here. Steve Gray's in between them this time, but that's not always going to be the case. He's bending low and he can't see what's coming at him. He's got to keep his eyes on Lawrence Akoli at all times if he's going to have any success. He's making this messy here. Steve Gray's having to get more involved than we'd like to see. You know, Steve needs to let them fight on the inside, in my opinion, a little bit more. You know, let them work the way out of there. Well, that's what Chamberlain will want, yes. to try and negate those big arms of Akoli, get inside, land a few body shots. He just hasn't established any sort of rhythm at all, Chamberlain. And the rounds are ticking by. Isaac Chamberlain hasn't, isn't spent yet. He hasn't used much, up much energy. He hasn't thrown any big shots. He hasn't really had to exhaust himself in any way. Lon Ciccoli is being very physical, throwing big shots, going to head and body. He's initiating all the physical game plan here. Isaac Chamberlain is doing very little, Adam. If he gets past four of our brothers, this is going to be a difficult fight for Lawrence Ciccoli, it really is. Just looked in his corner there, Isaac Chamberlain, as if to say, what, what am I doing here? It's not going according to any sort of plan, unless 
He just is hoping that he gets to round six or seven and suddenly a Coley tires and comes apart. Is Isaac Chamberlain Adam sticking to a game plan that has been created by his two coaches rather than himself? Is he going through a moment here where he's asking his coaches, I don't agree with this, and he's looking at them as if to say, I shouldn't be doing this. So is he now going to try and take matter into his own hands? I don't know. Again, it's messy, it's scrappy. Steve Gray telling he will throw both guys out if they continue to make this scrappy. Jab from Akoli, there's the space for the right hand, and that was a, a rough and rugged round. It's the round that Chamberlain wants, Adam. It's a round that he needs. The physicality of Lawrence Akoli. Such a major factor in this. It is. He's a big, big cruiserweight Adam. He's bigger than me. He's a, he's a big, big guy who carries a big punch. But with them attributes, there must become another side to it. He's going to tire Adam. He loads on shots. He does what he's doing. He's got to be careful that he hasn't loaded too much and too many times. Listen, we're already halfway through. He's gone up off his stool quickly, Lawrence Sacoli. No sign of it yet. It's uh, up to Team Chamberlain to change this around because it's one-sided at the moment. Lawrence Akoli calls himself Sauce, or the Penny Boy. His bunch of friends and the jar of pennies went all over the floor and they picked one out and said, this is going to be our direction in life, this is how we're going to make our money, and he chose boxing. One thing I will say for Lawrence Akoli is he's handling himself very well here. He's trying to box, he's trying to use the range, and he's looking to set up the shots at him. I haven't seen him doing this before. Don't get me wrong, he still looks raw. He still technically looks as if he isn't as good as Isaac Chamberlain, but he's, he's making the most of what he's got. Has been six rounds against Blaise Mendu at the York Hall. Got some criticism for that, but he's blown away pretty much everybody quickly. That's the thing with Lawrence Ciccone. So we just weren't quite sure how good or how well he's adapted as a pro because of that. Chamberlain is now getting close and isn't holding. He's trying to get his hands free to let go. It seems to be a Coley who's initiating the holding now. You know, you, you're going to see as this fight goes on, one fighter get more confident and another fighter tired. I'm, I'm adamant that Akoli can't maintain this pace. He cannot maintain to throw these power shots the way he is. It does have an effect out of it. It drains you, it tires you. And the old saying in boxing, does a good big un beat a good little and most of the time? He does usually, but when the, when the little guy is expending very little energy at them or is putting very little into the punches so far, like I say, that can, that can have a, a drastic change as we go further down the line. He's making him miss again, Adam. He's made, but uh, so far, he's not making him pay. He's just making him miss. Like I said before, is the game plan for Isaac Chamberlain to keep drawing the sting from Ron Ticoli? Is he going to put his foot on the gas? Because right now, he has to win every single round to win this fight on points. So, he's obviously got everything banked on a late knockout. He has to, because right now, he's lost this fight on points if it goes to points. Either that or he's a bit lost in a haze and just can't cope with the physical strength of Lawrence Akoli. We're not sure what's going on in Isaac Chamberlain's mind and in the tight-knit team of Ted Bammy and James Cook in that red corner alongside us. They look worried, they look frustrated in the corner. Uh, Isaac shocked by the physical strength of Lawrence, the size, he's imposing, his whole demeanour. He's the boss in here so far, Adam. You know, after four rounds, he, he's the boss. It's as simple as that. He's making Isaac just... There's, there's nothing... He's, Isaac's making Lawrence miss, but he's not making him pay in any way. And there is no good in just making someone miss all night if you're going to not make them pay for it. He's totally the boss. You picked Chamberlain beforehand. David Hay picked a Coley. He's with Andy.
minutes, 10 seconds. Seconds out, round six. I completely disagree. <laughs> he, he's not zapping Isaac Chamberlain's energy because he hasn't done anything to be zapped. If anybody's tiring, it's going to be long to Coley. This is the kind of fight he wants. He, in my opinion, Isaac Chamberlain has come out here and he's going to start throwing punches now because it's now in the fight that he sees that this half of the fight is his chance. I agree with David, though, that he hasn't won anything yet at all, no, Isaac Chamberlain. With that. Second half, there's certainly a spring to his step, Chamberlain. The corner have either woken him up or this is the game plan, that this is the time now to take the fight right to Akoli. He's trained so hard, Chamberlain, getting up at four or five o'clock every morning, doing his runs, going off social media. That's the first right hand we've seen him throw at them so far tonight. He's not zapped. What it is is he's waiting for his moment, and he's had to endure an, a, a very physical man leaning on him, pushing him back, but he hasn't had to use his physical game in any way, shape, or form yet. Physical and awkward. Yes. I mean, a novice, yes, but you think of sort of Deontay Wilder's type of style, you know, difficult to read and gangly. And Look at what we're watching, Adam. Who's the guy who's backing up now? Chamberlain is starting to walk forward. He's, 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 he hasn't walked forward once all night, he's now walking forward. He's now initiating when the attacks take place. Tony, he has to, to have any chance. Of course he does, Adam, but he knows that he couldn't have done this early doors, because he can't afford to walk onto one from Ron Zaccoli. If what I suspect he's doing now happens, then he's, going, he's banking all on a stoppage in these next four or five rounds. Good body, body shots. Yep. Body good shots body shots, shots good. inside. Again, they're tying each other up. Steve Gray gives them room. Good left hook there on the inside from Chamberlain. Lawrence doesn't seem affected or deterred at all by Isaac Chamberlain's power. That, that, that has its good points and bad points. The good points to it is he will continue to walk in. The bad point is he's going to take unnecessary punishment when he's trying to walk through Isaac Chamberlain. So Isaac Chamberlain needs oh, to make a oh, good right hand. He's touched down. Yeah, big that's shot. That's a knockdown. Glove touchdown, and that's another big problem for Isaac Chamberlain. There's the difference. He knows not just in physicality, but in power. It's. It's the, he's only been down because of his own personal mistakes. He threw a left hook there and pulled out with his chin in the air. That's why he got caught with that big right hand. It's the, it's the little mistakes, and this happens in the earlier parts of your career. This is, like I said, a learning fight for both, but Lawrence Coley's power is the deciding factor here so far. Of course it is. It's education, and both can come back or on from this. But it is Lawrence Acoli's night so far. It's not been pretty, as David Hay said, but it's been pretty effective. They are running out of time. He's nine rounds down, Adam. You know, it's 60-51 for me. He's in trouble, he knows he needs a knockout. Like I've said before, this has always been the game plan for Isaac Chamberlain. I just think he didn't envisage two knockdowns being involved in this fight. So, Lon Ciccoli doesn't visibly look tired to me, which, which is a good sign. Isaac Chamberlain is in a lot of trouble here because now he has to come out and force the fight. And that may play into Lon Ciccoli's hands. Lon Zaccoli shaking his head here at the start of the round, looking at Isaac Chamberlain as if to say, I told you, boy, I told you so. Yep, I've got you. It's round seven. It's the first time that he's heard the bell, Lawrence Zaccoli, for this, but at the moment he looks uh, fresh as a daisy. Boxing to his plan. And let's give Brian O'Shaughnessy and the team credit, because the power and the strength has worked and isaac chamberlain is in a whole heap of trouble here big right hand he's here big there isaac chamberlain a right hand to the side of his temple just left him a little bit off balance 
He knows now, Isaac Chamberlain, he's got to get close and make a Coley pay for any mistakes, but every time he steps into range, he's getting hit at them. Even the jabs look to be hitting him. Fraser Clark, the heavyweight with the uh, amateurs, said that uh, Lawrence Okoli punches like a heavyweight, and Joe Joyce was saying he's so awkward, and he's going to be like that, isn't he, to fight as an opponent? He is. He, he's, he's a nightmare to prepare for, Lawrence Okoli, because he is the size of a fully-fledged heavyweight, and he punches like one also, but he has the speed and nimbleness of a cruiserweight. So, you know, he has some fantastic attributes to his game, I just feel Isaac hasn't worked when he's made a miss tonight. And he's, you know, now that he's in a position where he has to press, it's not his kind of game plan and it's not what he's good at. You know, he looks the smaller man, he's feeling everything here. Lawrence has shown great levels of stamina on Adam. He's pressed this fight from the get-go, he's made it physical and he is not tired. Great levels of stamina. Great levels of perseverance, and he's flowed much more than Isaac Chamberlain. Not yet has been the classic we all hope for, but it has been intriguing all the way through watching what's next. But you just sort of looking as a neutral for something for Chamberlain to get hold of, some sort of breakthrough, and it just hasn't happened at all. He just. It's it just, it just feeling everything, Adam. It's hard for him. This is a hard, hard night for him. It's, it's a great learning fight, but it's hard. You know, the, busy, the bigger guy is imposing his will, using his strength, his size, to benefit him. And Chamberlain was saying, Akoli needs to answer the questions. I've done it against Wadi Camacho and others, and Akoli hasn't. Well, he is tonight. He's showing us something here, Lawrence Akoli. He is, he's showing he can win and win ugly, Adam. That's what he's showing here tonight. This isn't a spectacle by any means, but what it is, is it's a great lane. He's getting rounds in. He's facing an opponent. Like I say, we're seeing him on the back foot here, Lonzo Coley. I said pre-fight, can he do it on the back foot? Well, he's showing us he can, because this is the first time he's been asked. we all really hope for before the first spell after the major build-up and anticipation but it has been really effective work from Lawrence Okoli to negate pretty much everything Isaac Chamberlain has done has he landed any really meaningful punches Chamberlain he's tried but it's the the big guy in Okoli and that extra power and look at this the uh, ring intelligence, actually, that he's showing tonight to get the win at all costs. He's got nine minutes under Chamberlain to turn this right around. He is miles, miles behind on the cards. And look at this, the tape's loose on the left glove, and he appears ragged too, Tony. He is, Adam. Because you know what he's doing now? He's doing things he, he's never had to do in his career. He's having to press now. He's having to force the issue because he knows he's a mile behind. He knows he needs the knockout. And he's trying to do it, but it's not in his repertoire. He hasn't practised for this kind of fight, Adam. He thought Lawrence Okoli was going to keep coming all night, make the same mistakes, keep falling in. And if anything, he's the guy who now is being made to reach. He's the guy who's being made to, to pay for the mistakes. And stamina great from Akoli as he looks for an uppercut there. The wiry arms and that terrifically long reach being very effective. You know, he's throwing the right hands, now he's trying the uppercuts on the inside. You know, it's been a good performance this from Lawrence Akoli. As we said, not pretty, but really good. As I said, Adam, winning is winning. 
You don't always need to win pretty, you just need to win. And tonight, Lawrence Acoli has learned, well, he's learning to win ugly, as we all have to do on some occasions. Yep, we remember one or two of your uh, earlier too, escapades. Too many to remember that, and I can only apologise to the viewers watching now. <laughs> Thank God it's got better of late. <laughs> Thankfully. Chamberlain he's, trying to uh, land a body shot, but he's, he's breathing heavier now. He's trying to make a fight of this, Adam, but he's just... He doesn't have the physicality to impose himself on Lawrence Ocoli, and to be honest, he's just not feeling any of these Lawrence Ocoli. Only four knockouts in his nine wins, the 23-year-old Isaac Chamberlain. That was always the worry when he turned up pro in the first couple of fights we saw him that he wouldn't quite have the power to be able to go through the levels but he's done well he's got himself this opportunity will he be kicking himself tomorrow morning or will he just to say look he was just too big and too awkward for me well, he's, he's, he's had to find that out the hard way tonight that you know the cruiserweight division is a difficult one because there is guys who are just too too big for light heavyweights and then there's guys that are slightly too small for heavyweights. So there's divisions within a division in the cruiserweight division. It's hard to explain, but like I said, there is guys who are slightly too big for light heavyweight and guys who are slightly too small for heavyweight. So like it's two stone, Adam. It's the best part of two stone from light heavyweight to cruiserweight. And we're seeing here a guy who just is a little bit too too much for light heavyweight and a guy who can boil himself down to cruiserweight and it's showing tonight. Lawrence Ciccone, part of Anthony Joshua's promotional stable. Let's hear from AJ with Andy. Joshua, it's frustrating. It's been a difficult watch because we all hope for uh, more drama and more quality, really. But uh, he's right, Lawrence Ciccoli is uh, winning the rounds. Will there be any drama late on? Two more to go for Isaac Chamberlain. It is, uh, well, everything that he has to try and muster up and mentally what's he thinking at the minute he's just got to go for broke hasn't he big right hand there from Lawrence Acoli just as Isaac slipping as I said before there's a lot more target to hit when you're a cruiserweight you know it's okay slipping rolling using the shoulder roll Floyd Mayweather can use the shoulder roll so effectively because he's small because he's got a low center of gravity a cruiserweight is still a big target even when shoulder rolling and it's just been shown there by Isaac Chamberlain. Yep, caught betwixt and between as well and not able to deal with the power of Akoli, who's still light on his feet, showing us all that he can do these rounds, Lawrence Akoli. Isaac once again showing the heart of a lion sticking in there. You know, he's now taking heavy punches. He's still trying at them, but the size is just too much. It really, really is. Of course, he's trying. He doesn't know any other way. He's been trying so hard to make a big splash on the boxing scene. Take nothing away from that desire. But it's all gone wrong for Team Chamberlain tonight. And we've got to say it, Tony, unfortunately, it's not been the classic we hoped for. No, you know, the, the style that Isaac came into the ring with was obviously to get close and negate uh, Lawrence Coley's, you know, power game. But it, 
when he's got close, he's just been out-muscled. He's just not been physical enough and strong enough to do anything to Lawrence Acoli up close, and that's been the big factor tonight. We th I thought he would get up close at them and be able to make it messy and be able to hit Lawrence Acoli for fun, but he hasn't been able to because Lawrence has just been too strong, too big and too much. And you wonder whether there'll be any difference if they fought again in a year's time or so. Isaac Chamberlain, you know, can't really go down. He certainly can't alight heavyweight. As you said, there's a massive difference now. 12-7, 14-4. It's not the 13-8 days, although Akoli has had a point taken off. It's the best part of two stone, Adam. There, yeah. is, there is two divisions in the cruiserweight division. I'm a big cruiserweight. I can deal with this. But I feel for Isaac because he's not right he's, between he's yeah. stuck you know he can't make light heavyweight you know I, I think Isaac Chamberlain could probably if he wanted to get down to around about 13 stone but then you know he'd have to dry out etc etc but very very hard for the guy Ted Bammy looks bemused James Cook in there I wondered if the nerves beforehand were a really good sign, or I, I wonder if he sort of deep down thought this was a, a big arse. Oh, and it's dawned on him round after round, Isaac Chamberlain. You, your heart sort of goes out for him because he's. He's wanted this so much, and, and he got the platform, the 8,000 yeah. people, he got everything he's asked for. But our attention turns to how well Lawrence Acoli has dealt with this as well, because many questions beforehand, many people saying he's not looked great as a pro. Suddenly, he's delivering a dominant performance like this. He is Adam, and you know, I said in the build-up to this, a lot of questions will be asked tonight and we will get the answers. We have got the answers. Lawrence Coley can do the distance fine. Lawrence Coley can adapt and box on the back foot. Lawrence Coley isn't vulnerable. He has got a good shin. Lawrence Coley's power is there throughout a fight. So we've asked, we've seen a lot of questions answered by Lawrence Coley tonight. I'd like to know how much the struggle is to get to the cruiserweight because I think that might be a factor going down the line. But for now, he looks to be making it fantastically well because he's still energetic, still up on his toes in the 10th and final round here. At six foot five, surely his future will lie in the heavyweight division in a few years' time. As Isaac Chamberlain tries to take it to him, but Akoli still fresh as a daisy in the 10th round, and that's impressive. If Lawrence chooses to go to heavyweight Adam, he will encounter the same problems Isaac Chamberlain is encountering tonight. The smaller man, the less physical man, he will give away the attributes that he really needs at cruiserweight. I know you're a heavyweight as an amateur, but you went up from light heavy as a pro. Anything's possible. It is, of course, and you can never write this guy off. He has such a big punch, such a big heart. Great to see from both fighters here. Fighting till the end as well, Isaac Chamberlain, fighting the losing battle, knowing he's a mile behind, but still sticking in there. That's the respect and the pride. Very unorthodox body punch from Isaac, from Lonto Coley there. Just a heavy left up to the body, it's thrown from a crazy angle. He just nodded at me there, he looks down as if to say, ah, you were wrong tonight. But listen, fair play, he's, he's done the right things tonight. His power's been the difference, his strength, his size, his physicality, everything has come and clicked at the right time. A good body shot from Lawrence Acoli there. He's just forcing Isaac Chamberlain to the corner here. Again, Isaac Chamberlain looking at his corner, shaking his head. It's just been a, a real nightmare for him. But you've got to give Lawrence Acoli credit. Still throwing the big punches late on in the last 30 seconds or so. Said he'll give us the knockout, doesn't look like it will happen. Chamberlain's intent on surviving to hear the final bell. 15 seconds to go. 15 rounds before tonight. 
10 ticked off for Laura Sacoli, who's been too big, too strong, too powerful, too relentless. It may have been ugly, but he's won, and he's won by a mile. I'd like to see respect shown by both guys, you know. He's laughing. He knows what he's done. Lauren Sacoli had a lot of people to prove wrong tonight. He knows what he wanted to do. He's gone in there and done it. Congrats to Lauren Sacoli. Looks a forlorn figure in the corner, doesn't he, Isaac Chamberlain? It'll be a long wait for those scorecards, and they will be horrible to hear for the Brixton team. But it will be joy for the Hackney and Penny boys, for the man who was flipping burgers and watching Anthony Joshua win Olympic gold, who dedicated himself to the sport. And on the big stage, and the first big test of his boxing career, Lawrence Sacoli passes, he gets through, and he gets through well. Just a shame it wasn't the uh, action-packed fight we'd hoped for. It can't always be that, Adam. It's, uh, it was still, you know, it, it, was a, it was a physical chess match. It, was, it wasn't the fireworks that we wanted, no, but a lot of people and a lot of answers have been, questions have been answered tonight. He's gone in there and he's proven a lot of people wrong. He's done exactly what I said he wouldn't do. <laughs> He's he just having it. a word with you, I think. <laughs> I didn't catch what he said, but he probably said, you got it wrong, and I did. I hold my hands up. I got it wrong tonight. Let's you know, hear it good to see respect shown. Absolutely, let's hear it officially. It's going to be wide, very wide. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of championship boxing, the judges' scorecards read... 98, 89, 96, 90, 97, 89, and all three judges are in favour of the winner. And the new WBA Continental Cruiserweight Champion from Hackney, East London, Sauls Lawrence Apoli. The biggest win so far for Lawrence Acoli, very wide on two cards. One by just six, but no doubts, it was pretty emphatic from start to finish. And the Chamberlain team will be asking for a quite a while what went wrong and could they have done anything better? Lessons have been learned tonight for both for both camps. Lauren Sokoli has learned to deal with an awkward fighter like Isaac Chamberlain. He's learned how to win ugly for the first time in his career. Isaac Chamberlain has got a big rebuilding job to do. I really, really feel for him because I've been where he's been tonight, Adam. On the on on the losing side of, of, of not a great fight. But the beauty of this, though, Tony, the fact that they've met early on in their careers is that both have a future. You know, it's 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 been a, obviously a terrible night for Isaac Chamberlain, but he has gone ten rounds, albeit a wide loss of ten rounds, but, you know, he's 23, he can rebuild. The attention, though, is on Lawrence Sacoli now. It is, and deservedly so. Once again, Isaac Chamberlain is in the Who Needs Your Club now, Adam. That's, that's professional boxing for you. He's going to be the chief king of it. Lawrence Sacoli goes on strong now from here. He's now rated by the WBA. You know, the World Boxing Super Series is, is nearing an end. You know, the second semi-final is taking place tonight, so... There is going to be an, an undisputed cruiserweight king, which I believe I'm going to get my hands on after beating David Hay. But you're he, going to fight. You, a few he's more on the peripheral. Uh, there, <laughs> there is a few more fights left in me. Believe it or not, the fat boy has got more nights left in him. But we could see, you know, we could see Lawrence Coley here. This could be the start of something else. Eddie just whispered. It feels like Bellew cleverly too. I don't.